Emulation on Android is better than ever. There are a ton of great options on the market for devices that can emulate PSP, PS1, N64, even GameCube games, sometimes without a ton of issues, all for surprisingly small price points. For anyone who wants to jump into emulation, they could easily slap down $160 for something like the Retroid Pocket Flip and have a purpose-built machine for just a couple more laps in Crash Team Racing. Meanwhile, devices like the Razer Edge, Ein Odin, Pimax Portal, or even the Logitech G Cloud are priced a bit higher, but with better build qualities and more performant chipsets. Viewed alongside the other options from companies like Anbernic, there are a ton of great options available for whatever emulation someone wants to get into, as long as there's an emulator on Android to support it, of course. Still, I often wonder if it's worthwhile to just take a step back, look at all these various options, and ask, why not just buy a smartphone? Given how cheap older flagships can get, and ease of availability compared to many handhelds, which sell out immediately upon release, in some ways, it kind of just makes sense to skip over these dedicated retro handhelds altogether and jump straight to a regular phone, right? Well, once you dig in a bit, it's obviously not quite so clear-cut a decision, but still, it might be the decision that's right for many people. Starting to unpack this from the smartphone side of things, it's no question that smartphones these days are very capable computers. They come in a range of varied configurations, price points, and form factors. Since the first video posted to this channel, I've been promoting the Surface Duo as the best DS emulator you can find. There's nothing that really comes close, and smartphones like it often deliver experiences far removed from anything current handhelds can accomplish, whether that's a second screen, much larger internal storage, 5G access, or even a stereoscopic display. There's truly a device for most use cases you can come up with, and most of them have greater raw performance than even some of the best retro handhelds today. After all, we're seeing new handhelds like the Retroid Pocket Flip coming out with processors like the Unisoc Tiger T618, which get the job done, but are built with tech much older than, say, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 in my Z Fold 4. Heck, my Galaxy S20 Plus, a three-year-old phone, equipped with a Snapdragon 865, which sells for less than $200 these days, has a much easier time running GameCube and Wii games than similarly priced handhelds, while having a much nicer display, mobile connectivity, and Android 13, the only things needed to transform my S20 Plus into a capable emulation device is to download some software, slap on a controller, and launch a game. In many ways, it's a plug fiddle with a few settings, and play experience. So if I can get a much more performant device for around the same price, why would I ever want to buy a dedicated handheld? Well, there are a few reasons, but I think the one that I lean toward most is the convenience factor of it all. I could take my S20+, Plus, slap a Razer Kishi on it, and play a ton more games at higher quality than my Retroid Pocket Flip. But it's also far less compact to throw a smartphone and controller in a bag than the dense Flip or most other handhelds on the market. The Flip is also purpose-built to play games, with the controls, which are not even the top end of what similar handhelds can offer, to be honest, feeling less cramped than something like a Kishi or GameStar X2. That's not to mention that while I have some complaints about Retroid's general setup process, Emulator installation on the device and game maintenance overall is a guided process that takes less effort and prior knowledge for a new user than if they were to source everything themselves from websites and the Play Store. If I weren't someone who frequently messes with emulators on phones, there's a good chance I wouldn't even know where to start if someone handed me a smartphone and said, go nuts. The front end is also fairly streamlined in the way that I can just turn on the device, select a system, select a game, and most of the time, it's going to launch the game as expected without too much delay. 
I can do that on my S20 Plus with a front end like Daijisho. But again, it's something I personally have to know about ahead of time, and it's just a tiny bit more work to set up overall. Comparing the two experiences, each of these extra inconveniences or pieces of prior knowledge needed could be the tipping point to move emulation on Android from something available to anyone who's interested to something only usable by hobbyists. But, okay, let's say you're fine with a bit of inconvenience, and you, personally, sorta know what you're doing already. A smartphone's still the better option then, right? Well, not quite, because the other piece of the convenience perspective is the fact that smartphone manufacturers have systematically removed features that enable better emulation experiences over the past few years. Sure, most modern smartphones will have better performance, connectivity options, and displays, but you know what they don't have these days? Expandable storage, headphone jacks, and removable batteries. I personally like the S20 Plus because it still has a microSD card slot. Other phones around the S20 Plus's launch and later mostly drop the feature in lieu of slightly larger internal storage and dual SIM card trays. No doubt, most of my ROMs library will fit on the S20's onboard 128GB of storage, but having that SD card slot available makes transferring those ROMs from a computer more convenient while offering a great option for expandability if I need it in the future. Similarly, 3.5mm headphone jacks have been gone from smartphones for even longer than card slots, with newer devices promoting Bluetooth headphones to listen to audio. You can use a dongle or USB-C headphones, but clip-on controllers tend to block USB-C ports and not all of them offer audio pass-through options. I think it might have been the um, S10 line from 2019 that might have actually been Samsung's last to include a headphone jack, which, I mean, to be honest, if you wanted to buy something like a Note 10 Plus for emulation, which has both expandable storage and a headphone jack, you'd have a fantastic time emulating systems even through GameCube and Wii. You know, it's just a really solid phone. That is, if the battery still could. Removable batteries have become an especially niche feature among smartphones, and buying older phones might mean needing a heat gun and steady hand to open phones and swap out their batteries when they've lost a significant amount of their max charge due to regular usage, or for devices that weren't maintained correctly, batteries that have started to bloat. Even if you're content with what you initially get, gaming is an intense task which drains batteries faster. Older chipsets are less efficient, and you'll likely be running through your remaining battery life even quicker. Meanwhile, modern handhelds still have all of these convenience features. They're expected to contain one or two slots for microSD cards, along with a headphone jack. The nature of their designs even usually make them easy to disassemble to replace parts where available, including the battery, thumbsticks, action buttons, or even the display. Whether out of purpose or necessity, unless you're looking at really niche form factors, it's hard to find a handheld that isn't designed for the user to tinker and get the most usage out of their device. Smartphones, on the other hand, are becoming increasingly locked down hardware lines which require specialized knowledge to maintain. So, I guess considering all these form factors, the initial question kind of reverses itself. There's an obvious slot for these new dedicated handhelds in the emulation space, but Given the worse convenience and loss of creature comforts over the years, does it even make sense to buy a smartphone to use as an emulator? And of course, yeah, <laughs> just maybe not as the most efficient way to get a quality handheld emulator for the least amount of effort and probably not for someone completely new to Android emulation overall. For some of you, that bump in processing power you could get for below $400 might be worth repurposing an older device rather than attempting to source specific apps and settings to make sure your favorite game can run it all on that new handheld that can barely eke out playable GameCube emulation. The extra effort and lack of creature comforts for setting up a smartphone as an emulator might even be a key feature for anyone who's 
more interested in tinkering than even playing their games. We also shouldn't discount the idea of upcycling old tech. Maybe you, a family member, or a friend recently bought a new smartphone to upgrade your aging Galaxy S9 or Pixel 4. Most folks' main options are to either toss them in the trash, sell them for a small amount of money, or send them off to recycling. But it's still a working phone that's more than capable to use for gaming. There's no reason you couldn't slap on a controller, uninstall any unneeded apps, and keep using the device as a tiny gaming machine. Honestly, this is kind of where usage of smartphones as a handheld over whatever this month's Ambernic machine is makes a ton more sense. You already have the device, and the option is to either repurpose it or send it on the fast track to a landfill. Getting another few years out of playing games or even just a few more weeks of tinkering and digging further into emulation is pretty much a win-win scenario that is more environmentally conscious, better for your wallet, and provides a great learning opportunity. I think that sentiment pretty much summarizes my thoughts on getting a handheld versus an old smartphone. If you're already in the market for a new Android emulation machine, it's a much better deal to get whatever handheld can actually play the games you want, of course, but also something that will provide the fewest hurdles to actually getting started. For the majority of people, that might mean grabbing something from Retroid out of sheer convenience, or even stepping up a bit to get something like the Ein Odin for a more processing headroom. However, if you're more interested in the process of tinkering with emulation, or already have an old phone on hand that you can repurpose, even if you're losing out a bit in convenience and streamlined functionality, there's a good chance your old smartphone will give you better raw performance and ultimately be a more interesting choice. Honestly, it's all a matter of trade-offs here and what you're personally looking to get out of your emulators. And I, personally, think it might be time more of us talked about upcycling old hardware that's still extremely capable rather than only highlighting the bleeding edge of dedicated handheld development. Those are my thoughts though. I'd love to know yours. Are you someone with a strong preference for either dedicated handhelds or emulation on smartphones? Do you have a favorite Android emulation machine you'd recommend to someone? Let me know down in the comments. As always, if you found this video interesting or informative, go ahead and give it a like. And you know, I'm currently in the process of editing a guide to help folks get started with emulation on their smartphones, using my S20 Plus as an example. Make sure you get subscribed so that you don't miss out on it or any other handheld tech video in the future. In the meantime, I'll also drop some links in the video description to some smartphone controllers I personally use and the various handhelds mentioned in this video. Also, even with the dozen or so older phones sitting in the bookcase behind me, I still really dig the clamshell design of the Retroid Pocket Flip. If you're looking for another video to watch, check out the review I posted for that not too long ago. It should be up on the screen somewhere. I don't know where. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video, though. Until next time, catch you later.